Well, we are recording for record, right? Yeah. All right, good. Um, a man-on-man conversation? Yeah, so All right. just by policy, I have to record our interactions. Too. That's fine. I'm by sorry. policy, I got to record my interactions. Well. Whatever, man. <laughs> Welcome to the Freedom and Change channel. I have a good one for you guys. It's a conversation with the man acting as officer from my first, uh, first Amendment audit on a traffic stop. We had a little conversation about... Uh, what the incident that went down. So if you guys haven't watched that yet, go back and watch the uh, traffic stop there, and then come back and uh, listen to the conversation that we have about that traffic stop. Hey, hey, hey! Get away from the car. You gotta stay back. You walk over here one more time. You're gonna handcuff the instructor, okay? That'll be a problem for you, not for me, but okay. You gotta stay back, It gets a little slow at parts, so you can. Jump to the good parts if you wish, because it does get good at some points, and, uh, you know, their training definitely comes out. They're training to bar quarters, and it's uh, a little entertaining, so I'm not saying the guy's a bad man. He uh, actually seems like a good man after uh, having a conversation with him, but I'll let you guys be the judge of that. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you guys are also into being free men and uh, want to learn how to be common law and get out of the jurisdiction of the uh, corrupt government and their courts, then uh, subscribe to the channel. Please like this video, comment, and share it around. Help spread the truth about how to be a man in this uh, world, or in at least common law countries around the world. And also, I teach you guys what the actual constitution means and what position you should take in that constitution, because it is a trust and you should be the beneficiaries of that trust and uh, not part of the trustee where then you fall under their jurisdiction. But I'm getting off topic, so let's just get into it. And I uh, hope you guys enjoy, so check it out. I don't know, like conversation? Well, we are recording for record, right? Yeah. All right, good. Um, a a man-on-man conversation? Yeah, so All right. just by policy, I have to record our interactions. Too. That's fine. I'm by sorry. policy, I got to record my interactions. Well. <laughs> Whatever, man. So, so um, where do you want to start? I don't know, you watch. Well, first, how did you find me? I want to know that. I don't really care, but I just kind of, in, it's man. interested. It's kind of my job. Uh, I know, you're but. you're local, I'm local. Yeah, I know. So it's not that hard to figure out who people are. Well, uh. Especially with today's age of social media. Yeah, of course. Uh, well, Mort was my wrestling coach, I don't know. Okay. Did he, he direct you to me, or no? No. Oh. He just was a video passed around. Because I just heard, actually, like, there was a kid I talked to, he said he just talked to you, and he said, uh. You just talked to him about the video. <laughs> so it was kind of interesting. Uh, yeah, I figured it gets around town, yeah, really, actually, gets around town the, really quick. I heard about the video from somebody. I'm like, hey, it's your video. I'm like, nope. <laughs> I don't really care. But sure, I'm curious. And, um, <laughs> then we kind of figured out we were. Yeah. 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 I don't personally know you. But figure there are some other guys in the department. Like, oh, I think I know that guy. Oh, yeah. It's yeah. hard to figure out. Oh, you're probably, are you, you're younger than me, right? You're probably yeah. like 30 or something. Yep. Yeah, so I'm well, 34, so. A couple years ago. Yeah. So, uh, I don't know, you said you wanted to explain yourself on well, the incident. If you have any questions, or maybe... No, I don't have any questions. I just... The only thing, I was going to go talk to Mort, yeah. and I was going to be like, why did your officer threaten me? So I would like to know on that. Well, it's not a threat, that. but I wanted to be clear where our stance was, so... Um, well, it is kind of a threat. Well, so, <laughs> with, with traffic stops, um, statistically and inherently, that is the most dangerous thing that deals with enforcement officers. Um, I'm sure you're aware that the Chicago police officer just died from a traffic stop. That mm -hmm. had. Most officers that get hurt or killed happen on traffic stops. So um, our heightened senses are pretty up there. With the now, that stop, did I think that that was going to happen? No. <laughs> but you never do. Um, so when we start getting people, that extra people that we have to account for, that's extra distraction and you know, we don't always know people's intentions. Um, if we could trust everybody, then we wouldn't have jobs, you know? Um, with, also with traffic stops, there's case law, so you can look it up. Um, you seem very familiar with law, and that's good. Uh, there's case law that allows us to control anybody in and around and near that stop, within reason. Um, I feel, now, your opinion may differ, and that's your prerogative, but I feel that we are very reasonable, that we can observe, we welcome that, I have no problem with transparency. I think there should be more of it in our, in our job. We are in very, um, very trusted position, and sometimes like it's tainted. 
from bad officers or bad experiences, or people maybe just aren't educated on actually how things go. Um, but I feel like we were pretty reasonable, and when we start getting extra people in and around the car, like you were, and when I, at the end of our interaction, when I did say, you do that again, you're going to go to handcuffs and be under arrest for obstruction, in our eyes, and it is kind of a gray area, the law is interpreted differently by different people. It's not black and white, as you know. Um, well, it kind of is. can be, but... Legal isn't black and white. Well, the law is black and white. That, that's a rabbit hole we can discuss. <laughs> so, when you walked back up to the car, right up next to the offending vehicle, that I'd stop, that's kind of an obstruction in our, in our view. Like, that is not okay. And we kind of explain clear that, hey, you can observe, we just want you to be here, we want you to be here. You're more than welcome. And then if you want to talk and ask questions, you can, but in the middle of the stop, when we have to deal with the person that we stop, it's not really the time to do that. Plus, with traffic stops, um, there is an extent of reasonableness. So, I was starting to get on the border of, I'm detaining this person too long, but I also have this other person that I'm interacting with. And we have to be conscious with that. I can't just stop people and say, well, we're just going to sit here for a half hour because I want to take some time. That's unreasonable. Uh, the court says, well, but we can't do it. And I agree. That's not reasonable to do. That's beyond the scope of the stop. Um, the scope of that stop is just a traffic infraction. We talked about it. We dealt with it. Um, we actually got a warning right there. But that's where we are. That's our stance. I know that you have your feelings. But well, I don't know how many videos you watched on it. but What's that? I said I don't know how many videos of mine you watched, but... um. I felt like I was being reasonable in the position where I was standing, for first in, in the front of the car where you could clearly see me, mm -hmm. and then as I follow you to your vehicle to, you know, because I'm there to record you, mm -hmm. and then being reasonably in front of your vehicle where you can clearly see me, and then what, what I thought was that you're just uh, barking orders just to, you know, feel, get that authority yeah, up yeah. and like feel like well, you have the more, you know, the upper hand on me and stuff, so like, me being in back of your car was like, I would feel it would be less reasonable because that is the spot you can't see me instead of me being in front of your vehicle where you can see me and like when you're looking at your computer and you can see me you know I'm like in your eye in the computer I think that would be more safe for you than me being like behind your vehicle so that's why I like I was like the, you, if you rewatch the video you're like either stand in front of my vehicle or behind my vehicle and like it's like then you're like changing your words then wait no 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 go over there I want you very far away because that's what most officers do they want the person that recording as far away from the officer as possible so you can't actually catch what's going on so it's like no, I'm no. trying to be reasonable I, I'm just gonna stand in front of your vehicle in a safe safe location away from you away from the stop and so I, I think I was 100% reasonable where I was being standing and you can feel that way but um, like I said with you being in and, and near you're pretty close to that traffic stop the law allows us to control where people are the, bar, the sure. law or the legal okay, so, um, <laughs> but that's not I, law I, that's I, legal I, <laughs> it's not whatever Uh, you follow legal. I don't know if you follow law. If you wanted to throw me in cuffs, you wouldn't be following the law. You'd be. Th I could hold you accountable in that situation as a man. Different argument. I don't know if it's a different argument because. <laughs> so uh, you feel like you were being reasonable, and, and I understand that. But there's also, you know, it's like there's two sides to every story. Yeah. There's scene, but do you think the jury would have thought I was reasonable? There's, it's tough. I, I don't. I'm, I'm not, pretty sure the jury would have found me reasonable. Maybe, maybe not. I'm not a jury. And I don't know that that would have went to a jury trial. That probably would have been a bench trial. Or mm. a local ordinance where it's less burden of proof. Well, if it's going to be with me, it's going to it. Well, it depends on the charge. If it's a state charge, yes, you have a right to a jury trial. Well, uh, charge, you see a local jury. Well, we, don't want, we don't even want to get into it. Everything goes into a common uh, court of record for me in a common law court, so. Uh, I don't know if you understand any of that. Yeah, I do. Okay. So, but there's different, there's a hierarchy of how we can charge them. Not everybody gets charged with a state infraction. State charge. I understand that. Charge locally under Are you willing to take the bench? Me? And 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 speak into the record of verified complaint? Did I arrest you that night? Claim? Did I arrest you that night? No, but if you... I'm, I'm not going to take the bench on an arrest that I didn't make. Well, I mean, it, in any ticket or any arrest or anything, would you, are you willing to speak on the record of verified complaint as man? Saying, which I've done you harm, injury, or loss? Which complaint are we speaking of? Anything. Because that's how I would pr pursue it in a court. I'm not going to walk into a court and allow... I can't, I can't what if about court cases. Oh, I'm not what ifing. You're, you're bringing a claim against a man. I did not bring a claim against you. Well, wouldn't that, isn't that what a, a ticket is? Uh, or charge? Action. Or... No, that's not... What, I, what are you getting at? Are you talking like uh, 
like a domestic battery case? Are you talking about speeding ticket? What's, what's uh, the topic here? I'm talking about a, a complaint against the man. Anything. Against the man. Uh, an obstruction. An obstruction. So, it's on me and the, the state to have... Well, can the state talk? Now I'm just confusing um, you, Anna. Well, I'm trying to get in your same lane of, of how you're... you're I, you view um, the court system a little differently than I do, and the way it actually operates is, is different than the, how you view it or how you think it should. Well, no, I, I know how it operates. It op yeah. well, you When you write tickets, it goes into an administrative process, Yeah. and they're charging the person. Yeah. And when I go into court, I identify as a man. Yeah. And in a man, with a, as a man... You're a man, Garrett. Is your as a man, mm -hmm. the, in a court of record, another man has to take the stand and speak onto the record with a verified claim that I've done him harm, injury, or loss. So, for instance, in like a traffic infraction, if that person chooses to dispute that ticket or that charge in court, I am required to show up and testify to the bounds of his ticket. That so any ticket you write, are you willing to claim that another man has caused you harm, injury, or loss? I don't claim that as one of our stuff. So then you're just going to be... I can't go down that rabbit hole. <laughs> the job doesn't allow me to do that. Oh, I know it doesn't allow you to do that. That's why I, I, but the, but there are that's why I feel like uh, the way I feel about police well, officers, well, and that's why I call well, them gang, you're, because... You're partly, <laughs> there, there is some merit to what you're saying, you're partly right. You know, there's, there's issues. Well, I'm 100% right. Hold on. Traffic law... I can write citations on it, and I can be the complainant, is what we call it, the complainant in those cases. Yeah. I, I witness the infraction, and I usually take it mm -hmm. for that infraction. No, there's not necessarily a direct other person that's a victim. The victim is society. So yeah. what's different yeah. and what you're but, kind of but, saying no, that is that like, that's not how a real, a real court works. It doesn't finished. work that way. Yes, you're talking you're talking administrative process. Just so we've dealt with this a lot. Say we go to a bar fight here. Two people just beat the heck out of each other, bleeding blood everywhere, bad fight. We show up and we say, okay, we're going to you know, put people in handcuffs, we'll do our thing, we'll figure out who they do, and they say, oh, I don't want nothing. He didn't do anything, it was me. The other guy says the same thing. I can't arrest you. Yeah, you're I have, right. I have no complaint. I have no victim. I cannot be the victim. Well, in your system, you could write a complaint, but you're right. You're, in, a in a real court, you're not going to have a claimant that is willing to put their voice onto the record. I could not charge anybody with battery because... No, you couldn't charge them with battery. But if you wanted to come up with some other charge, I'm sure you could. Not necessarily. I don't know what charges would apply in that. I'm sure there's something on the we books. Have, we have a local ordinance that's <laughs> fighting in a liquor establishment. And that's the burden of proof is less for local ordinance. And it's pretty, like, self-explanatory. These two guys are fighting. They're not allowed to fight in the bar. That's it. So that's, that's different, but... With a state like battery charge, I wouldn't be able to charge. Does that make sense? That make oh, sense? I know 100% what you're talking about. Yeah. I don't think you understand what I'm talking about. I can only speak to how we operate. Oh, I know. And well, they don't educate you guys properly. Because they don't want you educated properly. <laughs> they don't want you to understand what a true court is. Okay. They like you guys to understand what an administrative process is, but they call it a court. And that's what. Well, that's pretty much what I teach and what. You know. Because everybody believes that when they walk into a government court, that it's a real court, which it's not a real court. It's an administrative it process. What makes it not a real court? Uh, the way the judges act. The uh, <laughs> there's a prosecutor that has no has no uh, reason to bring charges against another man. A lot of a lot of things. Okay. <laughs> more specifics? Well, a court of record needs, like I was explaining to you, needs an, another side. But there's a claimant. It needs when the person brings it. A, well, let's not say person, because a person, the problem, the thing is, is that the government's created persons, and everybody identifies as a person. Everybody has their own identity. Well, you can, I, I can identify as anything as I, I wish to identify, as long as I'm not committing fraud against another man. But when they accept the person created from a piece of paper, and the government says, okay, are you this person in, a, in their court, then, then they're accepting that role. And then that's how then they can move forward in the process of these you, whatever ticket you guys write or yeah. or things and, and so so on. I don't know if that makes any sense to you, but but yeah, that's pretty much how I I see it. A real court is when 
a man comes forward and says this man has done me harm injury or loss that's a crime a crime there's no crime unless there's you know a harm injury or loss to another man or or his property um there is no victim of this crime you know i'm not saying i agree with any of this i'm just saying this is for arguments that other people believe that you know victimless crimes should not be crimes or criminally charged like you know first thing that comes to mind is, is drugs just in your possession of drugs people think that well that's not a crime i'm not necessarily hurting anybody else well it's not a crime so what, well, in your in your administrative process it is a crime but that's because they make the it's like Mc, it's like mcdonald's like state of illinois has a statute and i am bound by law to enforce those statutes anyway you're bound by your oath to your badge of this which is given to me by the state but of it's not law anyway, <laughs> what you're saying I, I get you know and some things like traffic that's kind of a slippery slope like well yeah the traffic ticket didn't have a victim per se but what stops people from doing things that could have the potential to hurt people where's that line drawn? the consequences of hurting somebody the consequences of causing a harm injury or loss so if they would actually just focus on people causing harm, injury, or loss, and people would see yeah. the, you know, the results of somebody, you know, maybe if they kill someone, they would, you know, lose their life once they. That's what common common law has very strict, uh, you know. It's pretty basic. Yeah, it's pretty basic, basic and it's yeah. like <laughs> death is a, so, you know. So with like Ratchet Road, people speeding on Ratchet Road, if we had no speed limits, no way to enforce any of that. What prevents somebody from going 50, 60 miles an hour down that road and get chasing their ball runs out and let's go? Uh, or, so that's somebody that had caused harm to somebody else. Mm -hmm. But what stops the next person that does 50, 60 miles an hour and they don't hurt anyone? But they could. Where yeah, is they, that, they could. Where is that line drawn? But it's still not a crime until they do commit that. I know, I get your point of view, you know, I don't want to pe see people hurt, but I don't, also don't want people's freedoms to be uh, stolen from them before they commit a crime on another man. Like, I, I don't like the idea of people not being able to do as they wish just because somebody else feels like they might be harmed or it might harm somebody else in, in society. Like, it's a, you know, you slippery slope, but it's also like... Um, I don't know. Yes, I think it's, it's a really slippery slope because you start taking when people's saying, you start taking people's freedoms away, then more and more freedoms start eroding away from us in, in society. So, like saying something. That's like, where we're well, with this Corona okay, virus exactly. thing right now. Oh, that's a whole another rabbit hole. <laughs> so, you know, going back to like something like speeding on a, on a residential road. Okay, you, you say okay, well, we're not gonna say no more cars can drive down this road or in this neighborhood because this person died. We'll just say. How about you limit your speed because most traffic deaths are directly correlated to excessive speed. That seems reasonable, and that's kind of where. Yeah, it's reasonable to like have have a, suge I, a like, suggestion of a speed, to, yeah. you know, so people can, um, in society, be polite in society. And I think the consequence of somebody if they kill somebody or hurt somebody, then you know, take their life as well because that's what a lot of the common law things will do. If you have harmed somebody, even if you just steal their things, it's like, what would you, if someone takes your child or, you know, something like that, like, what would you, you do? You probably want to kill them. So that's like the result in some common law is to, <laughs> some people would say that's very acceptable. Yeah. And, but, uh, so like, but some people's personal beliefs that say that, uh, we are not, uh, but my, my point, decision to take people's lives. So my point is, is like when they do cause a harm injury or loss, yeah. then it's kind of up to the person that they've affected. Fam if it's a death, then it would be in the family or like whoever uh, was relying on that person to either like take care of them or be part of their their own society, their family as a society. And uh, then the other community would see that this is a harsh punishment. Then I wouldn't wouldn't want to do this. Be able to you know have this punishment enacted upon me if I if I harm somebody in this process of doing something like drinking and driving or speeding or whatever it is I see see that is a better solution than stealing someone's freedoms away before an act happens that is actually a crime <laughs> see, though, if everybody every victim got to choose uh, the punishment that the person harmed them did do you see how that could get very well it's more more of like how, how can you make me whole 
So then, then it goes to, then it goes to the jury and the society to kind of choose how they want to have you know so the, those the things say, reflected. This, but then the jury and society would say, okay, well, we're going to do this. Well, we just figure out what, what is reasonable. What's reasonable. Okay. Well, that's kind of what a lot of where we're at already stems from. Where, and I know you don't agree with a lot. What's of it. that? I know you don't agree with a lot of it. But like, no, what, what did you say right before that? I missed it. So that's kind of where a lot of our system. Oh right now kind of is. I know you don't agree with a lot of it, but right now when you commit a crime, there's set parameters for what is reasonable, and that's given to the judges about what they can do to punish that person. You know, certain crimes, you can't get this, but you can get this. Or you can get life in prison, but other crimes, you can't get life in prison. So well, that, there's like a hierarchy of... That's where you're... you're not. We're not in a court when you're talking about the judge making the decision, because the judge in a real court doesn't doesn't make the decision. They're just there to mediate between the two parties, so the and the jury, jury makes the decision. Yeah. Well, the jury, now, if, now if the party bringing the claim doesn't want a jury, then they can ask the judge to make it the decision. Right. Yeah. But like in in a real court, yeah. common law court of record, it's the claimant, the man bringing the claim, is the one that makes the rules of the court and the one that issues the orders. It's not the judge that issues the orders. So that's where, you know, we got two, di two different systems working on here. We got a common law system, which is the actual system that this country was put into place. But we, I call it, indoctr we've been indoctrinated so long to believe that this other system that was being put into place is the actual system, which is, it's not. Uh, you probably don't believe it. <laughs> I, I understand what you're saying. But it's the Seventh Amendment that says that we have common law. So. But it's the interpretation of the Constitution like I'm just learning that Constitution is a trust. It's the people that are the grantors or the uh, what's the other word for it? But anyway, they're, they're oh, I can't really forget what it is. The they gave the property to the trustees, which is the government, and the beneficiaries are the people. Yeah. So, like in any trust, the you know the trustees don't have any power or authority over the beneficiaries of the trust. And it's the same thing that we have in you know with the Constitution, but. Somewhere, sometime in history, they kind of flipped everything on us, and then everybody started to believe all this fucking bullshit nonsense. And now we're in the system that we're in now, but luckily we're all wake, starting to wake up, so. With growth comes a whole new set of troubles. Back then, everything was relatively small. The country was very small. Oh, it works the same. It works the same, though. But do you see where you get more and more? And oh, I want micro communities. I, I think federal government should be done away with. It's kind of uh, a nuisance. If we had micro communities, it would be way better. Which we're going to. Don't worry. It's gonna happen. I got the blockchain. That's what I'm teaching everybody. Okay. You even know what blockchain is? No. You know what cryptocurrency is? I do know. You know what Bitcoin is? You know what Bitcoin yeah, is. Yeah. Alright. You invest in it yet? No, I have not. Alright, if I give you good advice, go fucking invest I'm, in I, cryptocurrency. I'm, I'm skeptical. I've told everybody for fucking like five years. I got in like to the end of 2016. And everybody, as soon as I figure out the technology, I was like, this, this is amazing. Like, Actually, I, I just what, talked. What I just talked to my uncle, and I, and he just reminded me that I asked him to borrow ten thousand dollars. He's like, if you would have asked me for like a thousand dollars, we'd be like retired by now. Like, well, if you would have just fucking listened to me. And <laughs> so, I, serious question about that. Uh, what gives cryptocurrency, Bitcoin, Bitcoin, all this? What gives that its value? The security of the network, allowing you to transact simply and freely without any third party or inter. You know, you don't need to trust another party to control. You can just freely. So, so what what gives it, what gives it the security is kind of your your question is it's the de decentralization of the code. So the code is on like millions and millions of computers. So, like uh, for the code to be changed, you need half, half the network to agree on it, and it's, so it's very hard for someone just to come in and manipulate the networking community and the, the code. So it's kind of they call they call it immutable. It's unchangeable really. So like when they want to change it, um, they'll do like uh, they call it forking where the community will kind of agree on, like they want to implement this kind of small change and then they'll just fork it and then move from the old code to the new code and the, the code on the computer just updates. So the other thing, it's, it's, uh, it can't be destroyed because it's on millions and millions. You'd have to destroy every si single computer for it to destroy it. So, so that's, why, that's what it kind of gives it value. And, it, and it's also um, limited. There's uh, only for Bitcoin, depending on the cryptocurrency, some of them, you want to get the ones that can't be inflated, like, you know, U.S. dollars inflated, that's why we're in this situation where, uh, you know, we're all going to go poor here shortly. Not me, because I don't do the U.S. dollar junk. <laughs> I only, ca only cash in my pocket yeah. and try to get rid of it as fast as possible. But anyways, so like Bitcoin only has 21 million. So, um, you know, more and more people use it. That's why the price just goes up every time people start to get into it and uh, the adoption gets faster and faster. The price just starts to skyrocket. Can you spend Bitcoin as you would spend 
Yeah, if, if I have Bitcoin, you want Bitcoin, I give it to you and we can transact just like everything else. It's the same thing like uh, bartering or yeah. gold or whatever it is. Yeah. Like some people want to put gold on the blockchain. It's like, that's kind of like you ruining the whole use case of it. It's like the point of the blockchain is kind of like one great thing is you can walk across the border with nothing that you can store in your mind and then the government can't be like, give me all your gold. You know what I mean? Like it's kind of, or they can't come to your house and like steal all your gold or you know what I mean? Yeah, it's not tangible. You can you can store it, a code. You can store the code in your head. You can so things like that. It's really good to third third world countries and stuff like that. So it's hard hard to stop. Myself more of a uh, traditional safe investor. Not very high risk. <laughs> well, you're right now. Whatever investments you are in, like stock or eh, probably U.S. dollars or fiat, not fiat, forex. That's probably not a safe bet right now. <laughs> it's gonna get harsh here shortly. Or real real estate. Real estate market is. It's gonna uh, crash here shortly. Just like the auto market, lumber, everything, everything. Reminds me of back in 2008. Yep. It's gonna crash here. I don't know when, but I'm guessing. I was guessing like November, December, around Christmas. Economics is very good. We'll see. Well, it takes a little bit. So the housing takes about like four months for the snowball. You know, the snowball builds up, and then so when everything starts to. Uh, trigger, like Biden, Biden stop the uh, what is it, the eviction moratorium or whatever it's called. Yeah, that would have probably triggered it up pretty bad, but we'll yeah, we'll see. They said that you know, because people weren't working, they were jobs. Like, I don't know, but I think that they were rescinding that. Maybe well, I the court know. said it was illegal to keep that in place, or yeah, keep it. Oh, because you're pretty much like not allowing. You know, proper so proper owners to collect their was it, was rent. It state or uh, Supreme Court. Illinois Supreme Court. No, I think. Federal. I don't know. I don't really. I try not. I try not to keep keep up with that junk. <laughs> yeah, I kind of get that, but unfortunately, that's kind of what we live under right now. So. Right now, yeah. And that's my job. So well, we're here, here shortly. We'll be building a blockchain to make some micro governments, so, so and bring common law back. So. <laughs> that's the plan. We're manifesting in the world, as you imagine it. It will come. <laughs> Oh, it will happen. Definitely. All right, what? Oh, I don't know. I don't have that conversation. What? I was trying to learn how to, trying to learn how to have the moral converse, conversation with cops. So it's morals. Okay. Well, it's, there's this one guy that wants to go out and start talking to officers about like how far are you willing to go to be able to like do something, you know? So like, if I wasn't willing to ID, like how far are you willing to press that issue Wait, before? No, <laughs> well, Morally, how far are you willing? Uh, the nice thing that we have about our jobs is there are very few things that I have to do that I, that I am compelled. If I don't do, then I am violating my job. A lot of it is officer discretion. Officer discretion. And that allows each officer or more officer. Well, what's your oath? Do you know your oath? Can you speak your oath out? <laughs> Why not? <laughs> so... The nice part about officer discretion is we can look at each individual situation and kind of decide what is reasonable. Yeah. Um, I don't know if that was where you're going to stop. <laughs> All right, so that's part one of a long conversation. I don't know if I actually captured it all. I'll have to check my GoPro and see if that captured the whole conversation. But I still have uh, another about an hour from my... Uh, cell phone for you guys at least the post so i hope you guys subscribe to the channel and come back to uh, check out the rest of this conversation or interview or however you want to call it or say it. but we get into some uh, interesting conversations about uh like uh forms of governments or how things should be ran by governments and the uh failures of governments so on and so forth you know the things that i love to talk to about talk to people about so Make sure you hit the bell notification so you can get those videos as soon as they come out. And uh, like always, I'm going to leave you guys in love and the light of the one infinity creator. Peace.